Well, first I got to say, bye-bye, fat man. <laughs> He's had his last hurrah. He's done in politics. That's what I think, anyhow. But about the debate, this had to have been uh, the most boring debate I've ever seen. Um, these two people have done nothing at all that was, like, spectacular. It just was kind of a, you know, boring debate between two people. Now, they each had a couple of little moments here and there, but it's really all in the bag, if you will, for Nikki, according to the news media. You're not going to get anybody to say, oh, DeSantis was the clear winner, even though I believe he was the clear winner. Why? Because he articulated his points. He did a great job uh, bringing them across to the people. Yeah, he's not Trump, but who he is, it came across loud and clear. She is all about bowing to the establishment. And, you know, she, listen, here's what really gets me about Nikki. She wants to cut entitlements. That's what she calls them. They're not entitlements, first of all. People who worked their whole life and paid into Social Security and Medicare and all that stuff, um, these are not something, you know, that the government is giving us because they're just so magnanimous. This is something that people paid into. And they make it sound like there's no other way that they can um, save Social Security and Medicare other than, you know, readjusting the way Medicare and Social Security works. Well, listen, there are so many, so much waste. There's so much waste in the government. There's billions of dollars, billions of dollars in every single department that can be cut. Why don't we look at cutting those departments? But as one already sold out to the establishment, uh -huh, she's not going to look at those kind of things. Okay, the, establish the establishment and the wealthy are backing her. And in return, she's got to act like the Republicans of old. You know the ones I'm talking about. The ones who kind of act like Democrats. And basically, you give them whatever they wish. And once in a while, the Democrat establishment will throw a little bone to the Republicans. She is the establishment's choice for president. I mean, I ain't cuts to programs that affect Americans and benefit the wealthy, that's not Republican, at least to me. Now, she's even talking about the way to cut Social Security, and she made it very, very clear. I want you to watch this clip. Here it is. Let's look at it together. On the hard truths, one of the things that uh, Stan Druckenmiller and, frankly, Jamie and others have talked about is the need to reform entitlements. That's a light way of studying, saying cutting entitlements in a big and meaningful way. Are you on board with cutting entitlements in a big and meaningful way? Social Security goes bankrupt in 10 years. Medicare goes bankrupt in eight. Anyone that says they're not going to take on entitlement reform means they're going to go in and be president and leave the country bankrupt. You can't do that. Yes, we have to do entitlement reform. But that doesn't mean you touch anyone that's in the system. We should keep our promises. America should always keep our promises. But for everybody coming into the system, like my kids in their 20s, you change it. You say we're going to raise the retirement age to reflect life expectancy. We're no longer going to do cost of living increases. We're going to do increases based on inflation. We're going to limit the benefits on the wealthy. And we're going to expand Medicare Advantage plans so that we have more competition. There's just so much wrong with everything she said there. So much wrong. Because as time goes forward, the next generation is going to need more and more help Okay, than people of my generation, for instance. Why? Because everything is escalating crazy right now. We're talking about... Um, inflation out of control, the cost of housing, the cost of food, the cost of everything is just out of control. So instead of looking to cut the waste in government, what they're looking to do is cut the little guy. And like I said before, she's nothing but a deep blue candidate wrapped in a nice red dress, but she's a neocon and a warmonger. So I, I, I'm expecting a rough and tumble time between now and the Republican convention, which is uh, middle of July, like July 15th. So expect the left to pull out all the stops. Possibly, we may even see a breakdown of global communications. Don't be surprised that one day cell phones don't work. Internet maybe doesn't work. Don't be surprised if the internet goes down completely or the electric grid is cut off. A banking crisis? Don't be surprised if you see a banking crisis, something that would basically be subverting the dollar. Right now, the United States is already in a war about the dollar. My friends, don't put anything past the left. Don't put anything past the establishment. Let me tell you, 
they got clean away with it as far as the COVID scam goes. And so because they got away with it then, believe me, they'll do it again. But here's what's going to happen. If they do it again this time, it's going to be way worse than last time. It's going to be something that we could not even think of or imagine. Why? Because there's far too much at stake right now. Think about it. The Epstein files, Pizzagate, Biden crime syndicate, China, uh, Xi, President Xi, Biden's buddy, he'll do anything for Biden because he knows Trump will not be good for China. And we know what Trump already did for China. We know how Trump took China pretty much and said, look, this is what you're going to do. He placed tariffs on them. He made it very difficult. And sure, Xi ended up respecting him, but it was only because he was strong. Biden, on the other hand, he's weak. Nobody wants to listen to a weak person, especially when it comes to Biden. Let me tell you, Trump was the man who put China in its place. China. China. You go over to China. 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 So then we got Zelensky in Ukraine. And all he's doing basically is taking our money to pay their government salaries. We got Gaza and Iran. The left has open options all around the world in order to save their own hides. And believe me, they'll do just about anything. They will steal. They will kill. And they will be destroyed. You know why? Because that's what evil does. And evil, it doesn't have any regard for us. It can care less about Americans. It can care less about you and your family. The only thing that they regard is themselves. Now, DeSantis in this debate, he was himself. He was nothing, you know, great or out of the ordinary, but he was steady. He's a good debater, okay? Very good at what he does in that, in that regard. But he's not, like, excellent. He doesn't rise to the level of, you know, the way I like it done is somebody like Trump. He doesn't rise to that level. This is to keep people excited or motivated. Now, on the other hand, Nikki, to me, she made a complete jerk of herself. Go to DeSantis.com. Go to DeSantisLies.com. DeSantis, I mean, what does she say? 15, 16 times, then pointed that big finger at the screen every time she's talking. She has long fingers. I wonder if she plays the piano. Anyhow, I'd like to take that finger and just, you know, put that finger down. She has, she has some bad gestures you know it doesn't look good for a woman who she doesn't really have a personality you know what i mean she comes across as kind of like monotone and that one facial expression you know and and you can tell when she's caught off guard it's like the eyes get big but most of what she called lies to desantis go to desantislies.com well i did i went to desantislies.com what i found was uh, Haley lies, okay? Because what DeSantis was talking about there uh, and everything that she mentioned, most of it, 90% of it, was positions that DeSantis had about whatever it might be, politics or, you know, uh, uh, government exp expenditures or whatever it was, any of those topics she disagrees with. So instead of saying, well, I disagree with that, that's a lie. <laughs> oh, I, uh, that's a lie. She's calling them lies, which all goes back to the idea that Basically, today, we don't have a, there's no black and white. Everything is kind of in the gray area. And that's a real problem. And we're going to be talking about that later in the show. But to solidify my position on Haley, and something I really think we ought to know about. Recently, there was a town hall on Fox News. And all she does is repeat the same one-liners, just like she did in the debate. And points that big finger at everybody. That's all she did completely through this entire, you know, town hall that she had. Now, I was wondering why she keeps repeating these same lines. And then I, I kind of, the thought came to me. I'm going, well, she thinks her, uh, her audience is gullible. She just assumes she could keep saying these one-liners and then they all clap because they're all gullible. Look at this. Lois, undecided voters are the biggest idiots on the planet. Try giving short, simple answers. Sir, your question, please. Mrs. Griffin, what do you plan to do about crime in our city? A lot. 
because that's what Jesus wants. 9-11 was bad. I agree with that. God, I can't believe how easy this is. Mrs. Griffin, what are your plans for cleaning up our environment? 9-11. <laughs> Mrs. Griffin, what about our traffic problem? Nine. Hmm? Eleven. I know you laughed as I did, okay? Uh, th th that, that to me, you know, Lois, you know, from uh, the family guy. Well, Lois was running for mayor. And she was basically at the point where she didn't know what to do or what to say. And what she found was all she had to do was just repeat these simple one-liners and the gullible audience will go, oh, yeah, that's great. And that's exactly what was happening. So I want you to watch this. I have another clip here. Very, very important. Let's get started. Let's look at this clip together. Here it is. Nikki would sell you out just like she sold me out. I mean, I'll never run against him. He was a great president. Why would I run? Ladies and gentlemen, I've decided to run. What do you say to the former president about, he says you betrayed him, that you sold him out because you promised him you would never run against him? I will tell you, when I said that I would never run against him, we hadn't had the debacle in Afghanistan. We hadn't had inflation go through the roof. And we didn't lose the midterms by ridiculous numbers. And I campaigned for a lot of candidates, House and Senate and governor's races on those. And we were devastated when we lost the midterms. But I'll also tell you this. What he won't tell you is when I decided to run, I called him. And I called him for two reasons. One, because it was the right thing to do. He had given me the job. And two, because I wanted him to know I was in it to win it. And I told him then we needed a new generational leader. I told him then we needed to leave the negativity and the baggage behind. And I stand by that. Look, I think President Trump was the right president at the right time. See what she did? She's pulling the exact same stuff on the voters and the idiots in the audience are sucking it all up. Nikki is doing a lot of the same things. She's changing subjects and using the slogans or simple ideas, one-line phrases, most of which will never fly with people like you and I. Why? Because we see through that. So let's listen to this clip. Let's see what she had to say here. What did Trump say? Aha. Wouldn't trust her. What did she say? She's justifying everything that she did. She came out and said, I will not run against you. Okay, that's what she told Trump. And okay, so you won't run against Trump. But you forgot to say, except. You know, I wouldn't run against you, uh, except. Basically, if something happened in your family, let's say your husband, okay? Let's say your husband said to you, well, Nikki, I'm never going to cheat on you. But then after some time, he does. And then you ask him, why did you do that? Why did you cheat him? Well, you know, uh, you were younger when I met you and, you know, you were, you were better looking and, you know, you, you didn't do so much nagging. But now that you're doing so much nagging and you got so much older, eh, I feel like I had the right to. That's basically what you were saying there. You gave your word and you didn't keep your word. See, you can't have it both ways. You are simply justifying your wrong decision, your decision not to keep your word. In essence, no matter how you cut it, you are not a person that can be trusted, Nikki Haley. And I learned that if you give your word to someone, regardless of what it might cost you, what do we do when we give our word? We keep our word no matter the cost. That's what I learned. I learned it as a young man. I learned it in business. And I realized that when I had to keep my word at all costs, sometimes it meant just that. It would cost me time, money, whatever, to keep my word. But this is something that's long gone, especially in politics. And you are the epitome of it, Nikki Haley. I, I can't even listen to anything that Nikki Haley has to say anymore because all she does is simply justify her positions. <laughs> um kind of like her financial life. Uh, if you get a chance to opportunity to look into her financial life, here's what you're going to find. She was ambassador to the UN, governor, South Carolina. When she got to the UN, 
she did some great things, I got to say. She really did. She did some wonderful things there, uh, supported Israel and came against those other countries that didn't and, you know, chastised them when was necessary. But she followed the inside track, the establishment track. She made some very good contacts there at the UN and she sold out. She sold out to the establishment and she did it in order to get rich. That's really all it's about. And she will never be president of this country. Why? Because when you have a woman who sells out to the institution like she did, there's, it, it's like it becomes crystal clear along the way that she is not a woman to be trusted. And when a woman is not, it's not like a man. When, when a man is not trusted, people chalk it up to politics. When a woman tries to pay politics, play that game. Think about Hillary Clinton. She, she couldn't gain the trust of America because as a woman, we think of a woman as someone you trust, nurturing, loving, patient, kind, all these wonderful things. When a woman loses that trust, forget it. It's gone. And I think in Nikki Haley's case, I think it's gone. She has basically um, collapsed and given in to everything that the establishment wants. And she's nothing but a puppet right now. She's a puppet on the strings of the military warmongers and the deep entrenched um, establishment. And like I said, she's one of those people who dresses nice in a red dress. Absolutely. But on the inside, she's blue with corruption. That's who she is. Let's watch this next video clip. Here it is. I agree with a lot of his policies, but rightly or wrongly, Chaos follows him. Chaos follows him everywhere he goes? <laughs> and then the idiots in the audience are clapping? <laughs> they are so gullible. And they're not really listening to what Nikki Haley was saying. Did you really listen clearly to everything that she said? Because she was undermining all that the right, all that the Republicans have been doing to expose the corrupt election, to expose the, the stealing that went on in, in every state, pretty much. There was all kinds of voter corruption. It's been exposed. It's been in the news. I know in my state in Connecticut, it's been in the news. The fraudulent and frivolous lawsuits that have been put against President Trump, her statement of basically saying that chaos follows him everywhere he goes, she just undermined everything that the right has done to bring to light the corruption of the left. See, because when you say that corruption follows Trump everywhere he goes, you're basically undermining the basic premise that anything he's saying has any truth to it. You're undermining that. And you're making him out to be a liar. So why did you just say Trump is a liar? Because that's really what you meant. The ability to be able to expose truth requires that Republicans stay on the same team. You have changed teams. You've switched. That's what you're going to do. Why? Because you're the total opposite of Trump. You have been in bed, figuratively, okay, with the rhinos and the left to help them destroy this country. And we already know that you would not, if you were president, you would not. Oh, you maybe. Maybe you'd pardon Trump, okay? Maybe you would do that. I got a feeling you probably would. Why? Because you wouldn't want any more chaos, okay? But you wouldn't go after all those in the deep state that actually brought about all these false charges. You wouldn't be the kind of person who would want Biden and his crime family to be exposed so you'd let them go free. You wouldn't want to expose the child molesting and slave industry. You wouldn't want to do that. There's going to be a little more on that later. And you would allow all of the hard work that the Republicans put in already to uncover what actually has happened since 2020. And what about the people still being held without bail from the January 6th insurrection? Okay, forget it. We know who she is. I know who she is. And I pray that the rest of America wakes up to who she is because this is who the 
left wants to run instead of Trump. And they're going to do all that they can to try to get her to be the Republican nominee. I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't even think there's a possibility of that. But I do know that the left is pouring a whole lot of money into Nikki's campaign. So let's watch this next clip together. Here it is. Don't fix Democrat chaos with Republican chaos. You don't fix. Uh, This was her key line of the day, and she used it in the debate. Uh, This is what she always says. You don't fix Democrat chaos with Republican chaos. (laughs) So exactly what do you do? Haley, what do you do? Well, I know you compromise. That's what you do, just like every other politician in the history of politics. And that's why we want Trump. That's why the rest of the right wants Trump. He's a real deal maker. Now, is there compromise in deals? Yes, there is. But it comes down more on your side than on their side. He's not like the establishment. He's not like you and the turtle. We know who he is, right? And all the rest of them. He's not like the fat man or Lion Ted. He is his own man. And he's the one who wrote the book on making deals. So get out of the way and let's watch the Trump train roll on through, even roll on through South Carolina as it heads north to the White House. Speaking about rolling, (laughs) by now most of you have heard about the tunnels discovered under the Chabad headquarters in New York City. Was it meant for some kind of transportation? I mean, we're going to build an underground railroad. What was it for? Well, here's a quick video of the tunnel. Take a look at this. So what? Someone losing his mind over there. No one losing their mind. Um, what was that for? Yeah, that was the end of the day. Okay, that's what we got for this. So we're going to keep the things that we need to do. Can we have this one? For those of you unfamiliar with what the Chabad Lubavek movement is actually about, it's one of the largest Jewish religious organizations in the world. Even I didn't know that. I'm like, wow, really? And their headquarters is located right in New York City. Pretty interesting. Now, it seems that some of the students at this synagogue had been carrying out the construction of this tunnel underneath the synagogue. And they've been doing it for the past six months. I mean, first of all, I wonder, what did they do with everything they excavated? How did they get it out of there? You know, what did they do, carry it out in their pockets and walk down the road and had holes in their pockets, dumping it out like in one of those movies when they're, you know, trying to dig a tunnel to escape. I can't think of the name of it at the moment. But a riot broke out when one of the the uh, group of the Chabad movement ordered the tunnel to be filled and the students from another group tried to stop the construction workers from filling it. So according to NYPD reports, nine people have been charged and they arrested them with criminal trespass, among some other things. Um, I, this whole thing, like, is kind of mind-boggling. I don't, I don't understand it. Um, why, why would, why would guys want to get arrested, digging a hole? And, and if you in the video, it shows them. I mean, like, they don't even want to leave that that tunnel or whatever it is, the hole that they made. They would rather get arrested. What for? I mean, it, it really makes me wonder. Apparently, this all stems from control of the synagogue section of the building. The Chabad Lubavek movement holds the deed. However, it does not actually control the synagogue. And I'm saying, well, that's pretty interesting. I mean, they hold the deed, but they're not controlling the synagogue. So they've been trying to get control of the synagogue through a legal battle that's been going on for years. So I'm wondering how all this plays together. We're... Where does this tunnel come into play? I mean, it's in a well-known location, Crown Heights, okay, which is, you know, everybody knows Crown Heights. The riot breaks out there, and then there's police being called and people getting arrested 
And nobody seems to be kind of explaining their side of the story. In other words, well, we didn't want to, you know, let go because of X. Tell me whatever it was. Well, nobody's saying anything. So this dispute of uh, revolving around the building and the synagogue itself and the tunnel, I think it goes a little deeper than what we've been told. Now, I don't claim to have an understanding of this entire process or what's happening there. But the reason the tunnel was dug, we don't know. No one seems to know. Some reports are saying that it led to an abandoned woman's um, mikvah, which is like a ritual bathing area. But some other people are saying that it, it leads to an actually out-of-use men's mikvah located at the synagogue site. So, I don't know, were they like trying to spy on women or trying to spy on men? I mean, I, 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 I don't know here. There's, there's a whole lot of stuff here that's not being told. And I wonder why.